So in 3.2, we're finally ready to release the legacy armors that we talked to you about back in October. Uh, it's been a long time, and we've been kind of working on them slowly over the past six to eight months, uh, but we're ready to show them to you. The main reason we were redoing all the legacy armors was because we needed to redesign them and make them fit into the modularity system and the customization system for the characters. We wanted to kind of maintain the existing look of the, of the legacy armor sets that you guys have all seen for a long time. Uh, and we were kind of hesitant to remove them um, for a little while because we knew that you know, players and backers had gotten used to seeing them and had gotten attached to them. Uh, so we really wanted to spend our time with them and we're finally ready to show them to you. Modularity um, has always, is always the biggest challenge for an armor. Um, we like the saying that you know, the more modular you make something, the less different they become. So th there's a sameness that happens when you make things fit together. Um, and that's all, that was the hardest thing we had to fight. So with the legacy armors, there was outlaws and there was marines. One of the things we wanted to do with the legacy marines was to write them back into the lore as an older version. So the CDS marines you've been seeing in Star Marine and 3.0 and even 3.1, have been newer versions. But in 3.2, the legacy marines are actually gonna be older, they're gonna be more retro, a little bit older materials, and you'll probably see them in certain shops specifically uh, to give them a little bit more of a theming than the newer ones. For the legacy outlaws, we wanted to redesign them but keep the same themes. Material-wise, manufacturer-wise, they're really, they can go anything, right? They're not built from a specific manufacturer, they can be mix and match of all different kinds of things, just like a typical outlaw would be. But we wanted to kind of update them and fit them into the modular system and make sure that they would work. I think uh, players look for um, control over the games that they play. Being able to customize your character or even your ship to appeal to you as a, a player yourself really lets you stand out in that way. Since every single armor piece, whether it be under our UEE uh, Marines or our Navy flight suits, um, you can mix it up, uh, even with our slavers, uh, to really, in a way, redesign what we've created for you uh, to make it more personal. It's easier for us, especially for, uh, for, for example, for Squadron, or maybe some random enemies, or even random uh, NPCs in the PU. We could just swap things in and out and set those up uh, instead of making brand new assets every single time. From us, from Jeremiah, to character art, uh, for implementation, to tech art, um, I think it was being skinned in our game. Um, so it's all finished up. Yeah, that's right. Right after that, I jumped on the light uh, Legacy Marine, um, which was kind of fun for me because I kind of got to be my own concept artist. Yes. Because um, along with most of the Legacy armors, we didn't have concept art for. Um, I think that kind of helped in the design because uh, allowed us to look at what we used to have mm -hmm. in our original Legacy armors and kind of let that drive the vision for mm -hmm. what the new updated Legacy armors would look like. I did uh, the Heavy, Mar Heavy Marine Legacy and the Light Outlaw and Michael Broussard did the Heavy uh, Outlaw. Um, but for, for the other like three or four armors or so, uh, we had the character artists uh, uh, overseen by Josh Herman, of course, um, kind of get the essence of the original armors um, and just update them uh, to match the zones, uh, bring up the quality uh, of the sculpt, and also just the aesthetic in general. Um, and also, I think uh, there weren't that many materials, I believe, in the originals. We have a huge library of materials for uh, character armors or clothing. We probably have I don't know, at least 100 materials mm. that allow us to create variation uh, in, in color or material itself. Mm. Uh, we've been recently working on the color variants for right. our armor sets. <clears throat> so I think right now each uh, character armor set sits at around 21 variations of color, mm. or 21 colors, 21 variants, I should say. Yeah. Originally, uh, the Outlaw and the Marine um, concepts were done a lot from contract, different artists. So we had different uh, flavors from here and there, which is cool because uh, it innovates things and it pushes things and boundaries. The problem was uh, there was no similarities between, there, like it seemed like everyone, everything was built by different manufacturers. So we had to bring that in. So when it was kind of, uh, when we decided to update the armors, we decided to unify designs, materials, uh, colors. Um, and so, uh, it was a, I think it was a much needed 
upgrade. Uh, and then we were tasked to make legacy versions of that, so the before version. Uh, so we were kind of slightly confused in the beginning, <laughs> but like it's like, a, how do you say, a, a less sophisticated, less streamlined version uh, of the Marine Armor, and also the Outlaw as well, while making it look aesthetically pleasing, functional. So that was one of the biggest challenges. And so our answer to that problem was introducing more softer materials, like uh, leather, cloth, uh, exposed wiring, yeah, yeah, yeah. hoses. Exactly. I think uh, the Light Marine shows that a lot, I think. Yeah. Uh, with Shade, that he has like a, a, a hose that goes through the, the chest. The biggest example of multiple materials that would probably be <laughs> male legacy. Ma male legacy CDS heavy armor. 01. 01. Uh, is probably a best example of that because it has all different sorts of different materials. We mm -hmm. have different kinds of cloth, different kinds of leather, different kinds of metals. Uh, just kind of stitched together. It still looks cool, um, uh, and it it, it looks uh, more brutish, I think, compared to the current uh, Marines. This. Which, but also kind of gives us more opportunity to design, yes. because with less streamline, it's more detail. Yes. So instead of covering everything up to be, you know, fitted, um, very um, studied, everything just kind of like it works. We have to figure out how to put it together. Right. Um, but with that, it's we have to design a visual as artists to kind of tell that story. So with things that aren't streamlined, we have to kind of show this exposure of detail to make it believable that this armor set will actually work. But taking a step back and removing those innovations was a little difficult uh, for the concept and also yeah. a little bit on the character art. Yeah. Uh, and because we had to be like, this will look, this will look really cool yeah. right now, but then we have to remove that potential innovation and make it look uh, less streamlined than it is. Um, the intent with this guy was to stay true to the original. Um, we actually went through a couple different iterations. The f I, I first got, got put on this character with kind of a blue sky on it, like, you know, kind of do what you want, see what you can pick and pull from the original concepts, like concepts that didn't get completed the first time it was made, like years ago. And we, myself and Jeremiah, like kind of refined that. He did a really cool concept, which I think everybody's seen, where he reconcepted it, and I riffed off that, uh, changed a few things, um, with the help of he and Josh. We, I think it, I think it came up, came up with pretty something, something pretty cool. It's, it's mixed media, which is like my favorite thing about it, meaning that it's leather, cloth, metal. Um, it's not just a, you know, an armored marine suit uh, that's all metal or you know, rubbers and stuff like that. It's a little bit of everything, uh, which is something I, I really like. Um, it'll have a, he has like a scarf slash cape on the back, so that'll have a, like a sim on it in the game, which is cool. And it's a combination of painted maps and tileable maps for those of you out there who are like super into the, you know, into that stuff. The volume specifications were difficult on this guy in the sense that uh, it's really, since it is such a tight, fitting light armor, it was really difficult for it to be close fitting, but also adhere to the volume requirements that we have in order to make our characters modular, right? There has to be like a defined minimum maximum like range in every direction that an armor or a clothing set or whatever can fit within so that those parts can be made swappable so the players can customize their characters. So when it gets put in an engine, whether that's the arm region, the chest region, or core region, legs, helmet, like all those things can be, you know, swapped. You can make your character look as cool or as goofy as you want, you know. So for the volumes, they can be simplified basically as like four regions. You have the helmet, the arms, torso, and the legs. And they have very specific cutoffs to make sure they all fit together. And a challenge can be making them look artistically interesting while still all having the same cut region. So we'll have like specific like overlaps and like buffer zones that they all need to fit within. The character artist and Jeremiah uh, character team worked around those creatively to get the unique looks that we have and you know, to make it look special. Uh, a good design is visually if you can pour water on top of the character and if the lines on the suit are considered like, uh, like little wedges. If there are a lot of those horizontal wedges, um, 
and the water stops, that's not a good design. So the water actually has to flow through. And the reason why I use water, uh, Rob McKinnon told me this actually back in the day, uh, is because your eye is kind of like water when you look at something. Your eyes go from the top down. And so a good design will actually have your eye flow through the character. And so a lot of the current marine armor, uh, there was a lot of that in mind. For the legacy armor, uh, I try to do less of that. So it looks um, less streamlined, so it looks a little chunkier. And just having legacy armors in general shows uh, a length of time, right? And it shows that it's not just, you're not just thrown into a universe that doesn't have any history, right? We want our, our, our NPCs, our, our characters in the game, uh, the lore itself to feel like there has been history, there has right. been pain, there has been wars, there has been innovation. Uh, and we really want to show that to our backers. And so we want you to be really immersed into, into a world that's been, quote unquote, ongoing before the players even start the game. Um, and so Legacy Armor is a way to, um, I think, show uh, kind of the remnants of those history. So really with Legacy Armor, we're kind of telling a story of evolution in our world. And it shows, uh, it helps with storytelling uh, and we just want to focus on a lot of those details and not just present to you a green armor and say that's marine. So I'm looking forward to getting all these legacy armors into 3.2. Uh, one of the best parts about that is we're going to have six new armor sets for the players to customize their characters with. Uh, that means they can customize them with all the previous armor sets we've already done. So all our slaver sets, all our CDS sets, all our RSI sets, all our Odyssey sets, all that stuff is going to be customizable and swappable with all this stuff. Uh, we're working really hard and we're going to get them to you guys as soon as we can and that's actually going to be in 3.2.